Yo, what is going on, Comfy Gang? It's your boy, Comfy Neat. Uh, sorry for the long wait between uploads. Um, I've just been kind of depressed lately because I fucked up my hand while hitting the heavy bag and I haven't been able to do much except watch TV or play phone games with my left hand. So I've been pretty depressed for that reason. But today I wanted to make it up to you guys and talk about something, um, you know, fairly entertaining, which is the story of how I became a need, or not exactly me, but my friend, Jonathan. Because I couldn't really say much about myself because my life isn't really that interesting. I'm not a very interesting person and I would never do anything stupid or take any risks in my own personal life. But my friend, Jonathan, who is from California and um, as a person who has parents from Bangladesh, well, he has a more interesting story than me, so I'm gonna be telling his story. Uh, so this is the story about my, <coughs> <coughs> my friend Jonathan. My homie Jonathan became a neat. So a little background on, fuck my head, my friend Jonathan, um, well, he was actually really into psychedelics, um, just like me, coincidentally. Um, and well, you know, he had taken them, he had been introduced to them by his friends at um, UC Santa Barbara. And um, well, he had taken them maybe if, like, I think twice at that time. And he wanted to do them more because the few times he had taken taken them maybe two or three times. He had had a really positive experience or so he said. And, um, you know, they'd be, they had been very interesting ones. Um, he thought he had gained a lot of insight into himself. And he thought that, uh, he said that it made him go places that he'd, he'd never, uh, you know, been, I guess it made, he said it made the world appear a lot more vivid to him. I guess I could talk about my own personal experiences with psychedelics and maybe they'll match up with his, but that's for another time. I'm gonna be talking about Jonathan because this is Jonathan's story. So um, yeah, um, Jonathan anyways, uh, he really wanted to take them but because Jonathan was also a Spurg just like me, but um, yeah, he was a Spurg and he had no social skills. So he, could, he couldn't really take them outside of his, uh, you know, his friends, you know, providing them to him. So, uh, but because uh, he wanted to take them, um, but he had no social skills, he couldn't get them off of a, a dealer, uh, even though, because firstly, he didn't have the connections. And secondly, um, you know, his friends might have uh, given him a contact, but because he was so spurg like he tried contacting the dealer, but he never got contacted back because he must have sounded like a bitch or something. But anyways, um, so he looked up online, how else could he get access to psychedelics? And um, well, he ended up researching that you could actually buy these grow kits for psychedelic celery. And the psychedelic celery, um, well, he, was like, yeah, why don't I try this? Um, you know, although it was legally dubious, it wasn't outright illegal or so he thought. So he purchased a psychedelic celery growing kit online. And within a few weeks, it was arrived at his home. And this was in the summer of his second semester of engineering school at UC Santa Barbara. So, um, or I don't know what he was taking. He was taking something at UCSB. But anyways, um, he, it arrived and his parents asked him what it was because they saw him take it out. And he said, oh, um, this is my celery growing kit. And they said, um, wait, is this legal? Is it legal to grow psychedelic celery? And he said, Yes, um, it's not, it's not explicitly illegal, so he said. 
And um, it's not, you know, it'll be fine because no one will ever find out. That was his main thing. And his parents were kind of, didn't really understand exactly what it was. or So they just kind of went along with it. They kind of believed him, but they were kind of dubious in their minds. But um, anyway, so he was actually really uh, excited about it. And, you know, he did all the prep work. He sterilized the stuff the soil and the stuff that the celery would spread its roots around and form its structures in so it could grow. Um, and um, he set up, set up everything. He sterilized his basement bathroom. Um, and he, you know, he was literally quite OCD about it. He showed me pictures of his setup and he had like a little, you know, heater thing that would always keep the temperature nice and warm for the celery to grow well and you know he had like a little light in there to show the celery where which direction to grow but that's besides the point um anyways he had his whole setup and the celery was well going growing process was going pretty well it grew pretty nicely um, and several weeks go by and eventually jonathan had his first batch of celery and he was pretty excited about this so he, I think he harvested maybe two or three batches before something quite intense happened. And, you know, everything was going pretty well with the celery and Jonathan, um, yeah, he's getting pretty happy. He even tried some of the celery after preserving it and treating it for oral consumption. And, you know, he even had quite a nice time on this psychedelic celery. On the celery i'll just call it i don't know why i keep saying both words on the celery so anyways um yeah one day jonathan is invited out by his cousins who are visiting for the weekend to hang out with them for a few drinks and he obliges and goes to his cousin's place and um i guess leaves through the front door or through the garage i don't know what he told me i kind of forget but Anyways, he leaves uh, his home and is at his cousin's place. And um, but, however, unbeknownst to him, um, well, well, basically, um, he is using his parents had enrolled in a home alarm system that was installed by his very shitty phone company, uh, who always fuck things up. So. Lo and behold, they also fucked up his home alarm system because uh, I guess for some reason the wind must have blown, must have been blowing on the door and, um, you know, it might have been, you know, it, the, his front door was closed, but the home alarm system in Jonathan's home, because the door was just slightly open or so he said, um, it must have picked up on this fact and it detected it as the door being open. So it immediately sounded the alarm, but because Jonathan wasn't home, he was away and he didn't have the phone app uh, on him. He had no idea of this. So anyways, what happened though, was that the phone company was alerted and the company that installed it then inform the police because they have to check to make sure that there's no intruders. This is standard procedure. Um, so because of this, the police actually went to Jonathan's home and as standard procedure dictates, uh, they searched his entire house to check for intruders, to check for anything stolen, to check for signs of entry. And well, they checked everywhere, including the basement. And lo and behold, what did they find in Jonathan's basement bathroom? I don't know why. Well, I guess you would search in case someone was hiding there, but what they find, they found Jonathan's celery kit with literally, with literal, you know, maybe almost, you know, almost a hundred stalks of celery because he showed me pictures, obviously. Um, growing out of it uh with little celery buds and the whole setup was there and well obviously the police were kind of sussed out by jonathan's little setup so but because they didn't have a warrant 
um, for to actually search for illegal celery growing kits, uh, they decided to call uh, Jonathan's mom and press her for an admission, or at least that's what he suspected they were doing. So anyways, they called her and immediately started asking her in a very stern voice, hey, Jonathan's mom, what is this blah, 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 like, what is this uh, here? And Jonathan's mom uh, freaked out, but was freaking out inside, but she managed to stay calm and she told them that the celery growing kit was actually uh, for was actually medicinal celery uh, for Chinese cooking, and well, because the police, uh, you know, they didn't have a warrant, they didn't have a motive or anything, they had to take Jonathan's mom's words at face value. So, crisis temporarily averted. The police left. And, um, well, yeah, they left, but Jonathan's mom not knowing, and I guess Jonathan himself not knowing the legality of the situation, Jonathan's mom called Jonathan in a panic and started breaking down in tears, crying and screaming with anger, telling Jonathan to immediately, uh, you know, she was like, uh, you know, Jonathan, like, um, what have you done, Jonathan? What have you done? Uh, I'm just uh, trying to imitate the way he was saying it to me. Um, what have you done? Your life is over, Jonathan. Uh, do you know? Do you know that the police just came to our house and 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 searched and found your your uh, found your celery growing kit? And Jonathan, uh, he, upon hearing this, he was in a walk with his cousins at a local park. His heart immediately uh sank to the bottom of his fucking chest probably ripped through his esophagus into his stomach because of how far it sank and he um well he almost had a goddamn panic attack and started freaking the fuck out and was basically on the verge of hyperventilating on the verge of you know having a mental breakdown because well his ass thought uh, he was going to end up in jail because, well, nobody really knew any better at the time, right? That was a very real possibility. So Jonathan, upon hearing this, he goes back to his, uh, he goes back to his, they all, he tells his cousins what happened and they all go back to his place and, uh, He's, uh, what's it called? He's extremely, at to his cousin's place and he's extremely pensive. And during this time, he's quite literally searching up, you know, things like how to survive prison life, how to build a shank out of a, how to build a shank in prison, how to barter with goods, how to, you know, deal with bullies, how to street fight, how to not get raped in, uh, how to not get raped in prison uh, best, um, best, uh, safest prisons to, to live in, to go to in California, how to appeal for a better prison and all this crap, because Jonathan literally thinks he's going to get fucked in prison up the asshole when he drops his soap because, well, he doesn't know any better. And well, understandably he's panicked eventually after gathering himself, uh, he, um, well, he actually can't open the front door for whatever reason. I forget the reason why he told me, but he couldn't open the door. He had to wait for his mom to go back. So he's sitting there for the entire afternoon, just pensive and worrying, thinking this life is over. Everyone's trying to console him, but it's not helping because Jonathan thinks he's fucked. So eventually his mom comes and starts screaming, screaming at him in a rage again, freaking out, breaking down. And Jonathan is trying to keep calm composed and he tells her okay Jonathan says okay uh mom I'm gonna go home right now and I'm gonna dispose of everything so Jonathan goes home uh with uh um I think his mom had the keys or something that he needed so he goes home with his cousin his mom is too distraught at the time so she just stays at his cousin's place or relative's place after just having 
came back from work and well Jonathan goes back to his home and you know goes to the bathroom the salary kit is still there thankfully he's kind of paranoid that maybe you know they had taken some the police had taken some of the sample and tests but anyways he goes and he makes he pulls out starts pulling out salary stocks and puts everything breaks out breaks up the salary roots into little chunks and basically dismantles the entire thing cuts up the cardboard box with scissors and just shreds everything and puts it in, in, into separate plastic bags and uh, drives around town and throws them into as many dumpsters as possible to disperse the evidence all the while wearing latex gloves and wearing a mask and a hat to prevent any forensic evidence from getting into the disposed salary or anything of that matter uh, happening, unfortunate happening. And eventually, after everything is done, uh, he comes back and he informs his mom as what has happened. And for a moment, there is a brief moment of respite a brief moment of you know relief because at least for now all of the evidence of his salary growing kit has supposedly been disposed of so at least if they come back then you know maybe there's a better chance of nothing bad happening or maybe at least that was the intention of the um, police calling to scare Jonathan into throwing away his celery growing kit, disposing of it. And so everything is a little bit better, but there's still some doubt in the air because, you know, maybe they might come back with a warrant and it'll still be trouble. Maybe they took photos or whatever, but um, eventually, uh, whatever, that's, that's beside the point. So you might be wondering, how does this have anything to do with Jonathan becoming a neat? Well, Jonathan, unbeknownst to him, because of he was caught up in the panic, he completely forgets that the day that this happened just happened to be the day that Jonathan was supposed to enroll in courses for his third, his third year of college at UC Santa Barbara. So because of this, um, he completely missed the allotted time that he was supposed to log in and enroll in courses because at his school, well, it wasn't UCSB, it was probably, but it was a similar school um, in California, obviously. Um, well, because um, he misses a lot of time um, because you're basically a lot of times, well, he said where uh, you're um, supposed to, based on your GPA, he said, based on his GPA, um, where the earlier you are, the better chances you have of getting into classes. It's a cutthroat school like that. And Jonathan, he missed his course enrollment time. And therefore, when he logged on, by the time all, all this drama was over, it was already almost 11 or 12 at night or 12 a.m. in the morning. And when he checked what courses were available, um, he couldn't he couldn't get it into any courses because they were all not only were they all fully booked but when he checked his waitlist positions he was so far down the waitlist that if he were to ever uh try and get into any classes he would probably have to wait uh you know several months to get in at the best case scenario and but what realistically, what realistically would have happened in Jonathan is that, well, uh, the courses were so full that even if people dropped out, there were too many where he would not be able to get into any of his classes that he was supposed, that he was eligible to take for his third year. So because of this, um, he called his, his, his heart sank even further into his chest at this point, and he broke the news to his parents and this time his dad was became upset because um his dad was still 
working in Bangladesh at the time, but when he called uh, and told explained the situation, he got pissed off and his mom was pissed off too, but she was more pissed off about the psychedelic salary. But anyways, he called the school to see what they could do, but they said, unfortunately, Jonathan, we can't do anything because, you know, it would be unfair to all the students who had signed in earlier and got into the classes properly and we can't really do anything. We advise, they, they, these snakes at his school advised him to pay his tuition anyways, just to be on the wait list to see and hope and see if anything happened. But Jonathan not being a dumbass, well, he is a dumbass, but not being more of a dumbass than he already was, uh, realized that it's better just to not waste the money and just, you know, continue the following year and just take a gap year. So as a result, Jonathan was forced to take his gap year and this gap year was basically his first year of becoming neat. And consequently, during this gap year, Jonathan lost a lot of his cognitive abilities and a lot of his academic prowess because unfortunately, I can, I too can relate because I took a gap year myself. And I know I'm, Jonathan, like me, is one of those people that only had good grades because he was basically, um, you know, uh, you know, I guess, part of the whole system that, you know, basically being prepared to succeed in college but because he had taken uh, such a long break, he had lost all his academic skills, he had lost his ability to cram study. So by the time he went back and tried again, he basically bombed out and failed. And because he, he, he had lost so many brain cells and IQ points from Al basically Al Daring in his first gap year. And therefore, that as a consequence of that, um, Jonathan became a long-term knee, just like me, except he has a way more interesting story. My story is consider considerably less interesting. It just involves me, um, you know, you know, not being a failure. I'm totally not an interesting story compared to Jonathan, but anyways, that's how Jonathan became a long-term neat. And that is the story of how Jonathan became a neat, um, not me, my friend, Jonathan. So anyways, uh, hope you guys found Jonathan's story interesting. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe button if you guys enjoyed this video. And this is Company signing out. Uh, just, oh yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah. Um, did I already talk about my fucked up hand? Yeah, sorry. Um, that's why I haven't uploaded and I've honestly been pretty depressed. But anyways, I'm rambling. This is Company signing out.